Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing Arrow Season 8, Episode 1. We are finally back with Arrow videos, I'm going to be making Arrow videos every single week. The reason why this is out the day after it actually premiered is because I ran out of time, and fingers crossed from now on I'm going to try and make time to have three videos in a day, because obviously I've got the Flash review, the trailer breakdown, and then Arrow, because they're on the same night at the moment. So... It's a little bit tricky, but I am going to do this. Very excited to talk about Arrow with you guys once again. So if you are new and you want to watch my Arrow videos, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So we're going to be making Arrow videos quite a lot this season as it's, you know, the final season and it's heading towards Crisis, so it's very important this season. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into this. This was a big episode. This episode heavily tied into Crisis, like The Flash's episode 2 did, you know, because that was heavily to do with Crisis as well. And actually, The Flash teased the destruction of Earth 2, which happens in this episode and we'll talk about in a sec. And that was via Jay Garrick's sort of diagram that he made in the episode and he showed us it said this is where the antimatter is coming up next so that was a small detail but you can tell the shows are linked somehow like they have put thought behind you know the storylines and how it's linking towards crisis and because this was such a heavy crisis episode there is a lot to talk about but anyway so we start the episode and you get the intro the intro is different and it's very similar but you instead of having the deathstroke mask you have the Batman mask on Earth 2, which is absolutely amazing. I love that. And just the fact that this, at first, seems like, oh, it's a rehashing of, you know, episode 1 when Arrow first started. I was a bit confused. I was like, huh, is this happening? But then I was like, oh, no, this is, you know, an alternate reality. This is, you know, what's going on right here. So it turns out Oliver is on a mission to Earth 2. He meets Laurel, and he meets the new Green Arrow of Earth 2, which is, in fact, Adrian Chase, which was so amazing to see Josh Segarra back, but, you know, he's dead now because of uh, Earth 2's destruction. But anyway, so he's on this mission. He's been sent by the Monitor. This was the mission that the Monitor, you know, talked about in last year's crossover. And so he's on a mission, and he's trying to get this specific device. I'm not sure what for, but the Monitor wants it, basically. So this is part of his mission, and the Monitor shows up, and he basically is like, you're here for one reason, do not get tied up and caught up with all these people, which Oliver obviously has, he's been caught up with all these people because he's been living this fake life. Apparently, it's been 13 years since the Queen's Gambit actually crashed, and so he finally returns, they think, oh he's fine, but actually Earth 2 Oliver is in fact dead, and so... It seems like he's come back finally and everything's sort of repeating itself, apart from the fact that Thea's actually dead in this reality. She overdosed at the age of 18, so that would have been roughly around the time where Oliver should have returned home, like when he returned home on Earth 1. So that is a big difference. Obviously, the Green Arrow is someone else. It's Adrian Chase. And the Dark Archer is not Malcolm Merlin. It's because it's a different reality. Things are different. So it turns out... Malcolm and Oliver's mum are together, and we get, like, this really cool scene where we have a fake Felicity smoke for a second, you're like, oh shit, Felicity's in this, but then you remember, oh, she's not in this season. So that was a nice callback, it's such a big callback to episode one of Arrow's first episode, and, you know, the next couple of ones, because Felicity didn't actually pop up until a few episodes later. But anyway, so, just a really nostalgic episode, and so we go to like in between scenes and we go to the future stuff that is happening and I was very behind on Arrow last season like I don't know like five episodes behind and I've got to say I know not a load of people are a big fan of Mia but I'm really digging Mia like I really liked her in this episode I thought she was really good and I'm you know more invested in her than any of those other future characters I think William's pretty cool as well but that's just me for now. I, I'm digging her, and I'm digging William a bit. And so we get those flashbacks or flash forwards, you know, interspliced between this stuff happening here. And we know they're going to be involved in Crisis. They're going to be involved in the crossover. So somehow, maybe the Monitor or its Harbinger, you know, gets them all together and brings them back in time. And so, yeah, that is very exciting. I want to see that happen. That's going to be happening in Crisis. 
And so John Diggle appears in this episode, and at first we do a recreation of, you know, what happened when John first met Oliver, when he tries to escape the car, he locks the car this time, and it turns out it's our John Diggle from Earth 1. And that was obviously the big revelation, oh, we're on a different Earth. And in fact, it's not just Oliver that knows about that, it's Diggle, you know, he's sort of surmised and everyone else surmised he's not on this Earth, that's why he's been missing. And so John's there, and he keeps on trying to reach out to Oliver to help him, but Oliver is denying this help because he's doing this mission for the Monitor and he knows his fate is to die. And so, you know, he's trying to do it all by himself, like he did in Season 1, but, you know, John's not having it. So we have the Dark Archer versus Green Arrow, we have a lot of fights there, we get the big revelation of Tommy being the Dark Archer. Then by the end of the episode, when he tries to level the glades, like Malcolm Merlin did in Season 1, obviously it's just a sort of reflection in a different way to what happened back then, he actually doesn't do it. So, he finds some humanity in that, and at the end, when Tommy fades away, it's kind of sad because, you know, he has sort of redeemed himself for the bad stuff he's done. So, yeah, that was kind of sad. Like, I kind of wish, like, they got a few of them through the portal, not just, like, Laurel. Like, I love Black Siren, but, like, I wish especially Adrian Chase survived. I don't know why, but I thought that would have been cool. Anyway, so a crisis is coming. John gets told this via Oliver in a scene that really gave me chills because... He literally said, a crisis is coming. And that's what everyone's been saying online. And, you know, that's what they say. And so it was just a cool line. Anyway, so we get those flashbacks, sort of future flashbacks going forward. And we see the Deathstroke gang. You see that Connor's brother is actually the guy in charge of it. So they're fighting and they have a lot of fight scenes in this episode. Like I said, I thought Mia was really good. So it was very entertaining. I liked it, although it's not very linked to what was happening, obviously, on Earth 2 at the same time. And so we have Oliver's welcome back party. It's at Verdant. That's a nice callback to, you know, where Thea worked and where Oliver used to go back in the early seasons. So they're there for a bit. Nice callback. We're obviously back in Oliver's mansion, in the Queen Mansion, which has not been used for many, many years since they tore down the set and everything, so I think they recreated it, or at least in parts. And so, talking about liking Adrian Chase in this episode, like, he was really good. He had obviously a small part, but he was great in the stuff he was in, and I love the line when Oliver says to him, maybe I'm just ten steps ahead of you, which is a callback to Prometheus, and the fact that he always used to say, I'm ten steps ahead of you, Oliver. And that was just like a moment where I was like, ah, that's smart. I like that. And also, Adrian mentions Bruce Wayne. So Bruce is actually a real thing on Earth 2. Obviously, we've had him mentioned, and we know that on Batwoman's Earth, you know, Earth 1, we know that Bruce actually exists, but also on Earth 2, that means Bruce was there. Batman is a real thing on Earth 2, but obviously not anymore if he didn't escape. And that's because at the end of the episode, which we'll get to right now, Earth 2 is destroyed by the Anti-Monitor and the Anti-Matter that obviously engulfs it. We saw that last episode on The Flash, which obviously heavily links to it, because if you didn't watch The Flash last night, maybe you might have been a bit confused as to why everyone was fading away, why the city was being destroyed, but they explained that last night on The Flash. Check out my review, which I put out yesterday, if you haven't watched that. So Earth 2 is destroyed by the Anti-Monitor and his Anti-Matter. So this is the first bit that's actually been destroyed the first earth i'm fairly certain unless there might have been a few other ones before but from the diagram it said this is where it was going to hit next from jay garrick's diagram last episode on the flash and so does this mean that harrison wells from earth 2 our favorite harry is he dead and is jesse quick dead is barry and iris from that earth dead like everyone that we saw in the past because you know earth 2 was a big thing in season 2 of the flash that's where Zoom came from. We had various episodes where we visited there and we came back and forth. They were some of my favorite episodes of The Flash. And I really hope Harrison Wells isn't dead and I hope Jesse isn't. I bet you Barry and Iris are dead on that earth. However, I'm holding out hope for Harry because, you know, he's such a big fan favorite. I reckon he would have found a way to actually escape. So fingers crossed for that. So that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this Arrow video. If you want to see more Arrow videos, please be sure to subscribe, leave a like, 
leave a comment, also turn on notifications so you get notified whenever I do a new video. I'm nearly at 100,000 subscribers so if you could share it around that would mean the world to me and share it to your friends in real life, online or whatever. So thank you guys so much for watching, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.